look, I don't know, I can't predict where the future is going to be in 10 years, quite frankly. Um, I think there's going to be significant amount of disruption. There's going to be a lot of change in the landscape. But my sense is that Lenovo will be a $100 billion company that really is going to be on the cutting edge of technology. We started in 1984 as a reseller in China. It was known as Legend at the time, started by a group of about 11 scientists. And it was a reseller of you know, international brands. And it became the number one PC maker 10 years later. 1984 through 1994, they kind of went through this process of discovering who they are. 2005 was the big, big year. Um, 2005, the current CEO, by the way, he's been the CEO for the last 30 years, uh, YY, we call him YY. Um, he decided that in order for Lenovo to grow, they had to have an international partner. And that's when they decided to acquire the IBM PC business. And in 2014, we made another couple of acquisitions. You know, we bought uh, the IBM server business and the iconic Motorola business from Google. Uh, both pretty different businesses from kind of what we do. Um, and quite frankly, it took us a few years to digest that. And, and we had underestimated the complexity and the markets were quite different. So it took us a few years to kind of get through that transition. The big challenge for us has been the fact that when we acquired these two businesses in 2014, we became a very complex and very, very different company than just the company that sold PCs. Um, now we had three legitimate businesses that were very different, required very different personalities, three different cultures. Trying to integrate these three companies with three different cultures into one entity was a massive undertaking. It took us a while to get that alignment. I think that over, a, over that whole period of maybe four or five years that I was kind of seeing this evolution, I think we as a team you know, began to understand that you know, this, is a, this is a team, this is a company, this is a family. And I think that if, you, if I fast forward today, um, it is very much that. We have had a struggle with being a very product-centric company forever, right? And we have made a conscious choice over the last three years to go student body left and really focus on customers. I think customers are going to be much more vocal in telling us what they want. And so our ability to be successful in the future hinges on the fact that we can actually listen to our customers more real time and are able to service them on what they actually need. We got to transform we have these opportunities, we got to figure out how to connect those two pieces. We have a pretty vast ecosystem of partners that we work with. Now, the reason I like Adobe is not because, not because of any other reason other than my own selfish reason that we like their technology and the technology stack they provide. Adobe has probably the most complete solution end-to-end. So Coursefire is interesting. When big data was just the buzzword that had just started and everybody was kind of jumping on the bandwagon, I needed to figure out a cheap and efficient way to experiment and, and look at some use cases. So they're a data analytics platform. They're heavily invested into AI and they're doing a bunch of stuff that's cutting edge. A lot of the things that we, you know, we think about from a technology standpoint is about humanizing technology. It's about how we can leverage technology in some ways to help humanity. A lot of the infrastructure that work that we are doing is undoubtedly help entrepreneurs that are looking to invest and come up with new ideas. How do we go figure out how to help them? But at the end of the day, we are also much more focused on trying to figure out how to help other human beings, try to figure out how to use technology in a way that helps other people.